In this video, I'm going to show you the ping command, how to use it, and how it can be useful for some basic network troubleshooting. And that's that's basically the definition of the ping command. It's used to test network connectivity and basic troubleshooting. Um, and ping uses the Internet Control Message Protocol, ICMP, and more specifically, it uses ICMP Echo Request and ICMP Echo Reply. Um, I'll pull up uh, Wireshark and I'll show you the packets being passed back and forth between computers. Um, and what's important to know, and I've highlighted this, is firewalls can often block ICMP packets. And that can make it difficult to, to test uh, and use the ping command to see if a computer's online or if it's you know losing network connectivity. Um, but the firewall will block it and make it appear like the device is offline but it could be online and I will I'll walk through some examples of that uh, as well so here's a screenshot of uh, Wireshark and I'll show this live in an example but uh, you can see this computer here uh, 192.168.1.5 is sending a ping request to this 142 address and here's the ICMP echo request packet and then that remote computer 142 responds to 192.168.1.5 with an ICMP echo reply. So that's what a ping looks like um, in the background. So here's a simple little diagram, uh, my, my little network that will I'll walk through some examples. Um, but ping basically works by, and my laptop here has got the 40.2 address. If I wanted to ping my router, uh, my laptop's going to send an ICMP request, and if it accepts it, uh, it will reply with that echo uh, reply. Um, and same thing with any of these other uh, addresses. If I want to ping this 40.3, it's going to send over that echo request, and if nothing's blocking it, it's going to reply with that echo reply. And here's a little example with some firewalls. So, you know, firewalls, network firewall, Windows firewall, both can block those uh, requests. So if I send a, if I send a request to 40.3, it's gonna go through my router. This router may get that ICMP echo request and say, nope, and drop the packet. And that's, you know, that's a network firewall. It could be built into a router or whatever. And it could be also on your endpoints, Windows firewalls, Linux servers, whatever. Um, it could block it at the server level, endpoint level. So if it, it makes it, your firewall network device allows it, um, but your Windows host gets it, you know, it's going to see it, it's going to drop it. Nope, I'm going to drop that, that ICMP echo request. And then your host it will never send that reply back. So. Uh, whatever you're pinging from is going to make it appear like these devices are offline. So let me walk through some examples. So I'm here on my laptop and I'm going to ping the uh, my gateway here, 40.1. So I'll just do ping and then you can do the host name or the IP address. So I'll do 40.1 and you can see it's replying. And you can do, and by default it'll send four packets and four replies. Um, if I wanted to do a continuous ping, I could do a dash T and it'll just keep pinging it until I stop it. So that's to my gateway. Now let me do to that 40.3 server and there you can see that's replying. And let me do google.com because you can also, like I said, you could do the IP address or the host names if DNS, if there's a DNS record for it. So maybe you, you know, might ping DC 12. Well, it gets nothing back. That's because there is no DC 12. Um, but it can also be, you can also be used to test your um, DNS resolution. So if my 40.3 server had a, a DNS record, you know, I could ping DC 1. But I don't have a, D, a DC, uh, a DNS record for it so it's not going to respond. So here I've got that remote server up and I've got Wireshark 
and I'm going to run a continuous ping. And let me restart this. And then you can see on this uh, remote server, the Wireshark is capturing the packets. And you can see the uh, my laptop is sending the echo request. Let me pause this. So here's my laptop sending the echo request. And then the remote server, the 40.3 is sending the echo reply. So let me show you what happens when I turn the firewall on. So I'm going to go enable the firewall on the Windows server, which by default will drop ping requests. So you should see over here on the right, there you can see request timed out. So the server is is receiving the it's receiving them at the you know, it's making it past the network, the router, and it's making it all the way to, as you can see here, uh, the server is getting those requests, but the firewall is dropping them, so it does not send a reply back. Again, as you can see, my laptop keeps sending the pings, but there's no reply, so it shows this request timed out. But, if I go back and ping my router, it's responding, because my network is still up and my router is not dropping uh, packets to to the to the router so I'm getting replies from my router but now I'm gonna ping my server so it's making it past my router out my out my computer through the router all the way to the server but the server drops it and doesn't rescind doesn't send a reply back and I should still be able to ping Google, so I can still ping Google. So my network's working, uh, my laptop has connectivity because I'm able to, to ping my various devices on my network. I'm just not able to ping the dot three address because the firewall's blocking it. So if I go back and turn my firewall off, which I don't recommend just turning firewalls off. I'm just doing it to demonstrate here. Um, you can go into the firewall rules and make very specific rules that allow or deny ICMP instead of turning it completely off. So now that the firewall's off, it's not dropping ICMP packets, and you can see now it's replying to my, to my laptop. So here are a few commands. Um, I've already been uh, demonstrated the ping. So it's ping, and then the uh, targets either by host name or IP address and then to continuously ping you do the dash T um, the dash A I haven't demonstrated but I'll show you that it does a reverse name resolution so if you know the IP address you can do a ping IP address dash A and it'll see if there's a DNS record for that and then you can save your ping results to a text file and then if you want to see all the command line options just do a ping uh, slash question mark. So say you have an IP address and you want to see if there is a um, DNS record for it. So maybe you've got something in your logs like a firewall and you keep seeing this IP address. You don't know what that IP address is. You could do a ping ping dash a and then the IP address And then you can see it resolved that IP address to this host name here. And that's that's a Google host name. So this only works if there is a reverse DNS record set up for the IP that you're doing a ping dash A for. Um, but again, it's, it's, it's a nice little command to use if you're seeing IP addresses, don't know what it is, do a ping dash A to see if it resolves to a host name. Um, and then the other one, if you wanted to output a uh, ping command to a text file to save it, you could do a type it to a text file like this.
So that will just create a text file with the ping results, as you can see here. And then there, there's a bunch of options with ping. I kind of just went over some of the most common uses of the ping command. But as you can see here, there's a bunch of different command line options. Um, for basic network troubleshooting, the, the ones that I went over are the most common. Um, but again, as you can see here, there are a bunch of different options that you can take a look at that might be interested to you. Uh, one of the thing I wanted to show was uh, another way to use ping. Uh, may, maybe you have a host that's slow responding. Um, let me go back to my time. So, so ping's great just to do a quick test to see if a host is online, if it's replying, but you can also test it for some a little more uh, in-depth network troubleshooting. Maybe maybe uh, this computer or you know Google or something out on the internet is, is, is slow. Um, maybe your application's getting errors or it quits sometimes. Uh, you can do a continuous ping to see if that host is, re is dropping packets. And it may not be the host, it could be something on your network. Maybe you have um, high, high bandwidth usage, maybe you know out, out to your internet um, some hosts, you know, maybe another, I got another computer over here, dot four or five, or a bunch of computers, and something's streaming or downloading something, a large file that's consuming a lot of your bandwidth, that could start dropping packets to other devices on the network. And let me show you what, what that would look like. So here's something you may see, you, you may be getting replies back, but you, you sometimes get these times out, timeouts. And that could be for for various reasons. You know, like I was mentioning, you may have um, bandwidth overutilization um, on your network. Um, you may have a bad network cable. Um, it could be some something with the operating system. But you, you could see stuff like this from time to time uh, on your network. And again, this is just a real simple way to use the ping command to to, to test basic network connectivity. So when you're seeing something like this to a, to a host, um, I always like to start troubleshooting by, by pinging my, my gateway or other devices on the network. So I've got this host, let's start 40.3. As you can see, it keeps losing connectivity or dropping packets. Um, when you get request times out like this and replies, that kind of means you know something's you're dropping packets somewhere. Um, so I, I kind of like to start backtracking. Uh, am I getting that on the entire network? So if I ping my 40.1, um, and, and it all looks good, uh, then, then it kind of narrows it down to the, sing the single host. But if I'm getting it at my gateway, then you kind of have a bigger issue, and it may be more of a network-wide um, problem. But that's really the, the basics of the P command. Um, it's a great tool. I've been a network administrator for many years and it's often still one of the main tools I use to start troubleshooting. Um, I mean I will have an enterprise monitoring tool but again I, I will just jump to the ping command to do some basic tests you know ping my gateway, ping ping host, ping remote gateway. Um, it's just a great starting point to start troubleshooting and, and testing if, if hosts are online. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it uh, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.